Hey guys, my name is Moon and welcome back for more Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3 Tatari Goroshi. So last time the friends had a bento competition, right? And it was pretty fun, it got pretty serious, and then by the end, Keichi, Satoko, and Rika they lost basically, right? And then they went to Chi Sensei and they said that curry is bad and <laughs> yeah, they died. But yeah, let's continue. In the end, my selfish request was readily granted. As Satako muttered complaints under her breath quite merrily, she came with me to the store. Rika-chan didn't come with us. She said she had a thing she wanted to do or something. I believe her when she told me, but when I really thought about it, I started to think maybe she was being considerate towards Satako in her own way. Without Rika-chan here, Satako was more prouder and more loquacious than ever. いいですこと? And I wasn't really listening to her, but she was telling me all this quite proudly. Every time I seemed surprised at something or made an affirmative grunt in place of conversation, Sataka would say, You don't know anything, do you, Keiichi san? And smile very happily in spite of her complaints. She led me to, uh, by hand to all sorts of souls one after the other. She was such in uh she was she was such in a supreme mood that just being with her cheered me up. Merely being pulled in Satako's space was a lot of fun. So yeah, this is like uh Satako and her big brother now because it's only the both of them, right? Satako pushed a handful of receipts in my face. Why can't Satako do this kinds of mental calculations when she's at school? So, normal or harai pai tak san kauka, one rank ue no cheese idiot smasku kauka. Kore wa kanari nayamu. Otonasku yo torina sai mase. ちょ、<笑> After enjoying ourselves in such an exchange, we started to hear energetic voices coming from over by the butcher we visited earlier. I could see a handful of housewives flooding the place. Satako really seemed like she was having fun. She looked like a kid who had grabbed her family's hands while running towards an amusement park attraction. In the end, the bag of pork we obtained was so normal that it almost hurt, but I knew that it would taste absolutely delicious. Outside, at some point, the cicadas had been replaced by Higurashi's chorus. The air was so clear and it felt so good. Our silhouettes stretching out on the ground that made for a really wonderful picture. We had filled our bicycle baskets to the brim with our shopping bags. They only contained ingredients and various other foodstuffs. Even so, every last thing packed in them sort of looked really happy and made me really uh, feel really happy in turn. お買い物のうちからもう夕食は始まっているんですもの。野菜炒め楽しみだな。
うちのお袋のメニューにはさ野菜炒めってないんだよだから中華屋で外食する時くらいにしか食べられないんで今日は本当に楽しみなんだよそれはお気の毒でございますことでは今日は特別に美味しいのをご披露して差し上げましたよ Normally, right about now, was the time I would start messing with her. But I didn't. Ah. So, yeah, in this chapter, we're getting a, a, a little bit different relationship with Satoko and Keiichi, right? And it's nice. Satoko is a little bit of a good thing. It's a little bit of a good thing. It's a little She stammered for a second. Satoko had been prepared for me to start making fun of her right there, right then too, and when it didn't come, she was surprised. Or maybe she stammered for some other reason, I don't know. But immediately, I, I immediately knew she wasn't feeling anything bad. Uh, Satoko and I rode back on her bikes. I had a thought. Was I this sort of person? Until now, I would have lashed back at Satoko right away. If she did something to me. Yeah, that was the kind of relationship we had. We would poke at each other a little, then kick up a storm while nitpicking at one another. At some point, that had changed. We weren't playing our usual tit for tat. I didn't provoke her, so we didn't fight. That went for Satoko too. Satoko, who I thought I knew, hadn't been like this until now. Our relationship was changing little by little. That's what I, it felt like. But it wasn't something I had to worry about. It was like our relationship had become a little bit happier, a little bit more charming. I wonder why we changed like this. Was she lonely and projecting her older brother Satoshi, who hadn't returned home onto me? I mean, yes, basically. Rika-chan told me about that yesterday. That was probably exactly it. So, as my actions drew closer to Satoshi's, Satoko was returning to how she'd been when she was living happy with her brother. In other words, this Satoko was the real Satoko. Satoko had been able to see her brother again and finally had gone back to normal. Now that I've been playing the role of the brother, I discovered that she really could smile so sweetly. But I wasn't Satoshi Hojo. I was Keiichi Maibara, a totally different person. I couldn't become her brother. I could come close, but I could never really get there. That was a vaguely, somehow, a little sad. I was wearing Satoshi's mantle, and that would have come to off one day. And that would doubtlessly put an end to this meager, nostalgic, peaceful time of Satoko's. A limited tranquility. A tranquility that would end one day. Putting it in those terms, it really was sad. I shook my head firmly and drove off those pointless thoughts. Nagging like always, but she still seemed really happy. The mood of hers drew me in, putting a smile on my face. Hey, Keiichi, my bar. Why don't we quit thinking about this uh, having to end one day? If it will, then just think about it when that happens. There was one thing, however, that I could say for sure. As long as I smiled like this, Satoko's own smile would never wane. So as long as I stayed this way, this tranquility would never end. Satoshi would come back one day too. That might happen a lot further away than I'd like, but until that day, what's wrong with me being a replacement for him? Saying that I'm not a real, real brother, so I can become Satoshi, that was just an excuse. If I just didn't run away, Satoko would stay happy and live a fun life annoyed of nitpicking. I don't know what happened to Satoshi or what made him abandon Satoko and run away. But just seeing Satoko in such a good mood made me think I could persevere as long as I needed to. So this is what I thought. I wouldn't become Satoshi, I would become a replacement brother. Yes, yes. I was 
実にうまいこの塩コショウ味のお汁がいいんだよな実にご飯が進むほらほらゲイチさんこぼしてますわよそんなに焦って食べなくてもご飯は逃げませんのよいいや逃げるぞ出来たてほやほやの最高の味はできた瞬間からどんどん逃げていくんだ里子が100美味しく作ったものなら俺はその100を丸々味わう義務があるそれがクーガーのマラーってもんだそれはお気持ちだけで十分ですわですからもっと落ち着いてご飯をお食べなさいませ<笑>そうだな悪い悪い No insults here I meekly scratched my head, then put down my chopsticks and laughed along with her like it was funny. I ended up doing most of the eating. Sadako was barely taking a bite, she seemed satisfied just by watching me enjoy the food so much. Whenever I filled my mouth with more of her delicious meal, Sadako looked glad. Dad, let me enjoy the food even more. In this way, she kept smiling happily the whole time. Looking at her made me really happy as well. The time passed softly and gently. Before I would have gone back and forth hurling insults at Satoko, in other words, we would have gotten into a fight right away. I'd have never known I could feel such peace of mind by talking to her, honestly, like this. I was a little bit happy about having discovered this new side of Satoko. For example, I was eating food that Satoko had made. There wasn't an inch of me that thought it was suspicious. Before, however, Satoko would have definitely put some sort of trap into this. Sazuko looked down, her face bright red, and pointed down the hallway as if to say, Just go already. Whoops, my old habits seem to have come back. But yeah, this wasn't all that bad either. No weird schemes, everything is just natural. And while having such utterly unguarded thoughts, I went into the bathroom. Thug, my foot caught in something string like. Is it trapped by Satoko? Bang! <laughs> Yakan? A kettle? Tarai? Satoko! She got me. I can't believe her. She always does this when I let my guard down. I can't relax for a minute around her. Still, it was kind of funny and I didn't really feel like getting angry. Sadako, laughing uproariously, came over. I picked up the wash tubs that had crashed into my head and then went to go hit Sadako with it. But when I doubled over with laughter, that was been welling up within me, I couldn't manage it. I wish things could go on forever like this. Don't say that, Keiichi. You know what happens later. It's gonna be super sad later, man. It's not like I was having the most fun since coming to Hinomizawa or anything. But it was probably the first time that I spent my day so simply and comfortably. It really wasn't work much. It was only a few hours, after all. As an only child, it was my first days of having a sibling. Just washing dishes with her felt really nice. Side by side, we washed with the experienced Satoko doing most of the work as I threw in appropriate words to add to the conversation. The scene was so commonplace and yet so mild and warm. Maybe I had felt this kind of warmth before too in the past. I think I've stood next to the sink with my mom like this when I was little. It made me feel nostalgic when I remembered it. It was the same sort of slow, easy time. It was tranquil. Such a quiet tranquility that the back uh, wasn't uneasy about anything itself almost made me uneasy. <laughs> hey wait Keiichi Mabara, you feel uneasy about something just from spending time so leisurely? There's nothing at all to feel uneasy about. 
I mean, why would I be punished for enjoying a gentle life? I'd do anything to keep these days going and I would never do anything bad no matter what. I'd work hard for it and endure much for it. So God? It's not much of a dream to want this kind of thing to keep on going but can't you grant it? Who's calling then? It's she on. I hadn't noticed until she mentioned it. I hurried to the stand and then ran to the phone. Who could it be at a time like this? I did feel a little like the phone had interrupted my happy moment. But I still wanted to brag about how happy the time I was spending made me. No matter who it was on the other side. Was the mom? That was a little call of me when she was only calling because she was worried about her son. I couldn't help but give myself a dry smile. まあね。なんとかおかげで。ご飯はちゃんと作れてる。本屋は何を食べたの?へへ、野菜炒めとご飯と味噌汁だよ。スーパーでいろいろとお惣菜を買ったから、何気にお金も豊富でさ。そうそ
It was like, it was so like Satoko to take this chance to proclaim that it was all for my sake. But there was no way to conceal her own enthusiasm. It was true that this gentle time would come to an end when my parents got back. There was no need to lament that though. I can at least put in the effort to continue our mild moments like this. Like yesterday, Satoko told me she didn't need to be escorted home. But Rika-chan wasn't with her tonight. She would be going home by herself. Everyone knew everyone else's faces in here in Inamizawa. So it wasn't like it was dangerous to go at night, but it still wasn't good to set a, a little girl on her way all, all alone. At the very least, that's what I thought at uh, Satoko's older brother. There was no point in impressing her anymore on the subject, so I took a handful of Satoko's hair and rubbed her head vigorously. Hey, Satoko! Gotcha, gotcha, you na! I thought. Your Nini will bring you part of the way there. And that's what I thought. I was about to say when I suddenly got embarrassed and my voice trailed off. Nini could only be the nickname Satoko gave her older brother and nothing else. I was about to use it pretty lightly, so I started to feel apologetic and a little ashamed. Nini. What did Satoko just say? Uh, <laughs> She's forcing a laugh now. Sadako laughed awkwardly and turned red in the face. Of course, I was embarrassed when I saw her too. Because the fact that I was trying to act like her brother had gotten across. A warm feeling spread out from my chest. It was completely different from romantic feelings or any of those more impatient emotions. It was much more graceful, quiet, warm and calm. Satoko still needed her Nini. I had initially thought Rika-chan was being sly by not coming today. But when I thought about it like this, I could feel a kind of thoughtfulness of her worrying about a good friend's feelings. Maybe Rika-chan had understood that she couldn't play the part of a brother herself. So then, no, let's stop there, Keiichi Mabara. There's no point in thinking about it so hard. It means everyone feels the same way. It means everyone wants Sateko to be happy. Sateko is acting as though her Nini running away from home didn't bother her at all. Even though that wasn't actually the case, she was very sad and always waiting for him to come home. Because Sateko was a stable person when she was his sister. Wait, what? Because Sateko was a stable person when she was his sister. In order for her to really be this level-headed, having a brother was something she couldn't do without. In other words, Sadako still needed a brother. Nobody had the right to smile it away as childish immaturity. In fact, they deserve praise for being so close to each other as siblings. That role of the brother should be played by her real Nini by Satoshi, but unfortunately he wasn't here. So since I'm here, I'll play the part. And not with a guilty conscience, but in a very natural way. Because was there something wrong with seeing Satoko smile so happily? Dude, this chapter, man. Like I can even imagine what's gonna happen later. Like, of course it's gonna be it's gonna revolve around Satoko, right? I can't even imagine what's gonna happen. Yeah. As Keiichi being like this, right? Being Satoko's big brother, then he's gonna be like very protective and and stuff like that. I cannot wait to see what's gonna happen. The sound of the motor on her bike light was too loud and I couldn't hear what Satego said. Oh, the nice music is back. I guess we'll give this uh, Satego's theme, right? We got Rika's theme, I think, when... 
I think last time, then last time, last chapter we heard Rika's theme, and maybe a couple episodes back we heard it as well, right? But yeah, this is Sateko's theme. ケイトさん。そうか。もちろん本当のニーニーとは全然違うんですけども。こう色々そういうところが似てますの。本当に不思議ですわね。似ていると、ニーニーを思い出して寂しくなるか? Once I said that, I thought for a moment that was absolutely the wrong thing to say, but Sadako didn't seem to mind the one bit. As I was flustered for a moment at her hitting the mark, Sadako suddenly asked me a question in a calm voice. It was very quiet, composed, and an adult question. It was quiet, but her voice sounded lonely somehow. It was not Rika. I could say for sure that at least it was a lie. Yesterday and today, Sadako had been so happy spending time like this with me as siblings. And that was proof itself that she was lying about it, not getting to her. So I gave Sadako a light poke in the head. Wait, what did he say again? Okay. <laughs> Despite her saying that, her expression seemed a little lonesome. At this point, Satiko herself had realized that her question had been wrong, the wrong thing to say. We didn't need to keep talking about something that Satiko regretted. So in order to cut the conversation short, I grabbed Satiko's head and pet her. I wonder what kind of siblings Satoko and Satoshi were. I've never seen them together, but I could say without a doubt that they were really close. As for the way in which they were close, it was probably quite like this. It was so cool that the day's heat seemed like a lie and yet the moonlight was somehow faintly warm. The quiet chorus of insects was pleasing to the ears. That was nice. So yeah, the feeling I think Keiichi is having is like when you're having fun with your friends, right? And then you don't want it to end like, I wanna, I wanna continue, I wanna continue. And it ends and it's kind of sad, right? But I like this moments like this, yeah. Well, let's view the tips then. Intermediate now. I could see to Tommy Takun and Okomura Kun walking over to the gym storehouse. They needed to go get the bag of lime used to make the lines in the court for our next gym class. They were on duty today, after all. But in that storehouse, a terrible trap was awaiting them. The two of them fumbled around with the gym storehouse lock. Oh, what's this? Okamura kun pointed at the part of the door and started whispering to Tomita kun. Then realizing something, they both jumped away from the door. Oh, Satoko, you're like that. Is it a mistake? The two of them are aware of the trap of the two of them. They are aware of the trap of the two of them. And then, they are aware of the trap of the two of them. 
According to Satoko, after they noticed a suspicious trap on the door, they would go around and try to get in through the back window. And just as she's prophesized, they went around to the back. And she, as she prophesized, they climbed up, opened the window, and tried to sneak in. An explosion of pure white lime burst out of the window. After a few moments, the two of them managed to crawl away from the window, both of them completely white. いや、しかし、よく書かったよな。あんな器用なトラップ、富田君がまどを登るとき、どこに手を置いて、どこに足を置くかとか、どこへ飛び降りるとか、そういうのを全部読まなくちゃ、絶対に書かれないぞ。い
Dumping a whole bag of lime powder in her, getting her their revenge. That being said, these two pretending to be tough, not only that, but standing still completely blank and silent. But anyway, ignoring what happened before, having someone chase you with their mouth full of lime in such a way they can even speak, yeah, that would be scary even for Satoko. Our underclassmen crash around the classroom in furious combat getting white lime everywhere. Hey Satoko, why couldn't you see this coming exactly? At the time, I hadn't seen something coming too, though the teacher coming to me afterwards and giving us all a stern talking. That was it? Okay. <laughs> but it was good though, yeah. Mostly, I guess, it's not really, how do I put this? Like... Yeah, additions to the story. But it's nice. It's just some random moments, I suppose, right? But yeah, this episode is more or less about Satoko and Kichi's relationship. I mean, going into like, yeah, sibling relationship now. Being a little bit different, right? When you compare it to the other chapters that uh, they were almost, or always, I mean. Not fighting, but yeah. Like having fun, doing traps with each other all the time, right? And it's nice seeing this one. And as I said earlier, I can't really imagine or I don't really want to see what bad things might happen right in this chapter. Like I like this moment. And I, I don't want to see bad things happening to both that are side Satoko to Keiichi. Yeah, it's going to be really, really sad. But we're going to have to go through it so yeah we're gonna continue this and do more higurashi when they cry chapter 3 that's Ari Goroshi in the next one so i'll just see you then guys bye bye